Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Please visit the playlists that are on the Master's on the master's voice. When you have time, please make a habit of visiting the playlist that I have taken the time to use to compile the various prophecies for you. So you can visit the America series. And in that series, you will find more information about why the Lord calls the nation of America, mystery Babylon, and how he will attribute the exact punishment of revelation 17, no revelation 18 to this nation, how that punishment is actually going to be administered by the twin horns, if you will, of Russia and China. There is a Russia and China playlist with almost 20 prophetic words and videos. You can find the prophetic words on my, ch on, on the YouTube channel here. Just go to the dashboard and you will see the playlist, Russia and China playlist. You can also find them in written form on the formal work that the Lord has raised up sovereignly for his glory. That is called themastersvoice.com. All the information for this ministry work is below in the description box. Please like the video and share, but perhaps after you watched. And so today, the message that I am bringing is part of the supernatural series. So the supernatural series is something that the Lord definitely has sort of pushed me into a little early. Many of these things have been on the blog since 2019, and some of these things I have been seeing since as far back as 2008. Um, 2008, and also some of them since childhood. So the dreams that I have been having of aliens coming to this world and openly unveiling themselves, that, that started off when I was just a child, and it certainly wasn't something easy to see. But the Lord took those dreams away because my mother was comforting me at the time and telling me that those things would not harm me. And I said that the Lord honored my mother's comfort to her child and those dreams stopped. But as I began to grow up, they certainly did make their reappearance. And now that I'm an adult, they come with full force and they also come with the Lord's voice explaining the reason why creatures like aliens and creatures like that tall furry creature that is called the abominable snowman. I think it might have another name. Yeti. Yes. Thank you. Yeti and creatures such as one that I recently learned of in September last year, which is called a Wendigo. Never heard of such a thing in my life, as well as undead creatures that we will discuss in today's prophetic message. Today's prophecy is about zombies. So that is the popular name for them, zombies, but I, Celestial, call them reanime. So if you have any questions about what I am talking about in previous videos when I'm talking about the reanime, I am definitely talking about this subset of humanity that will rise up in the end times. And for this, I give absolutely no date because the Lord has not given me any date, but they will rise up in the end time and they will not come from where popular TV mythology has told people they come from. They will rise up directly from the human population that is living now. And the Lord has given me some things to say in this video. And so I will say them as we get to that point. The prophecy for today is called the cost of staying alive. And I received this on in April, 2019, I can't actually remember the date. There's no date here. It just says April, 2019. So the banner scripture is this, the coming of the lawless one will be accompanied by the working of Satan with every kind of power sign and false wonder and every wicked deception directed against those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth that would have saved them. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. I've shared in many videos that this is one of my favorite scriptures. And the reason that it is, is because if you actually break down the application of this scripture and you understand what it is telling you, you will have almost a clear and direct view into what the end times are going to look like, what we should expect, and how we should then conduct ourselves in light of what God is telling us. 
So the, the verse is saying that there is a lawless one. So this is automatically telling us as Christians, and even as people who may not yet have come to faith, that it is not wise to walk around in this world living with your lapels flying in the wind, which means you're just living your life and you think that the only thing that is here on earth is us human beings and our pets and the animals in the zoo and the animals in the forest and the animals in the sea. And that's all there is. I shared in yesterday's video that this is a very supernatural world. And the way that we can tell the world is supernatural is because we ourselves as humans are supernatural. We are three parts. We are body and soul and spirit. And I said that only one part of us, which is the body is visible, but two parts of us is invisible. And the only way you can tell that the invisible and the visible work together is when a person dies and you see the body lying there. It's not talking anymore. Can't move, can't ask for food, can't do anything. It has passed out of this natural plane into the supernatural plane. So the other two partners that were living in the house that we call the body, they depart out of our sight. And all we can see left here is the body. And so this is a supernatural world. And one of the greatest deceptions that is actually grabbing people in the end times, both Christians and non-Christians, is this internal knowledge that we carry supernatural aspects about us, but then not being humble enough and content enough to be human beings as God has made us. So people are so super so thirsty for the supernatural now that they consumed vast amount of entertainment and data and articles and YouTube videos about angels and, and rising to a higher plane and tuning into a dimension and a frequency where you can talk to spirit guides and things like that. People are hungry for the supernatural, but they are bored of the supernatural. Who is Christ? They do not want the supernatural that comes with Jesus because Jesus by his very nature is a very disciplined and organized person. And the supernatural of God states that in order for power to be granted, to you in order for you to have several certain levels of prayers answered, you will actually need to follow disciplines such as sanctification, holiness, getting rid of sins in your life, walking according to God's law. And then eventually God will begin to trust you with the higher levels of things, such as being able to lay hands on people and see healings and things of that nature. These things with Jesus follow a process. God is a very process oriented God, but majority of people out there don't have time for this. They don't have time to be disciplined by God. And yet the Bible says, go out in all the world and make for me magicians, witches, gurus, psychics, ascended masters. He said, no, go out and make for me disciples of all the nations. And then he said, when you're out there discipling, preach the word and these signs will follow after. So the word of God comes first, and then the signs and the wonders and the miracles come second. But people aren't interested in the law and the order and the process of God. They just want to see power. They just want to be able to say, I prayed for this person and this and that happened. Or they just want to be able to see the manifestation of spiritual gifts in themselves. And most of the time, the pastors are not telling people about the cost of seeing the manifestation of the spiritual gifts in us. That it's not just something where you just jump in and say, okay, Jesus, make me this and I wanna have 12 prophetic dreams. It does not work like that. And so the time is here when the lawless one will enter in among us accompanied by signs, power, and false wonders, lying wonders. And I shared in previous videos that because the old writers did not have the word for technology, they use this phrase, lying wonder. A lying wonder to an old time prophet would be, for instance, looking through time to see an age where a man dies and then his body is raised through mechanical or electronic or technological means. Now, a prophet gazing through time and looking at something like that, who knows that the Bible says that it is appointed for a man to die once and then the judgment would not be able to express himself in any other way except to say, it is a lying wonder that a 
man dies and then through this mechanical beast rises again. So the scripture is telling us something very important. It is telling us, child of God, you are going to enter into a time where number one, it will be lawless. Number two, the working of Satan will be very visible before you. Number three, Satan's working are going to come with power. I shared in a recent video that at the end of times, and many people are experiencing it now, where demonic spirits are actually entering into your home and they are touching your physical body in some people's homes. They may be breaking things. You may be having strange winds and strange experiences in your house. Shapes and figures may be appearing in your mirrors. All these things are the evidences that Satan's workers and demons and spirits can feel exactly what spiritual people can feel. Spiritual people can feel the changing of the seasons. The, the rise of crime and sin in the world is the obvious visible face. See, it's the natural thing that you can spot with the eye. Even the police chiefs are coming on TV here in New York City and just mentioning how high cri crime is spiking in this state. But from what I can see, it's spiking high in every state. And so this is the rise of lawlessness. The criminals just care less. In every country, I'm sure, people are marking these changes. And another thing is that the criminals are not only outside, most of them are sitting in very high positions of power. And so lawlessness is taking place. Satan is definitely working and he is working with power. He is working with signs that the child of God should be able to notice by now. And he is working with lying wonders and wicked deceptions. But what does the scripture say? It says these wicked deceptions are directed against those who are perishing. The word perishing means dying, but it doesn't just mean any type of dying. You see, if you become a beloved old grandma and eventually it's your time to go, you've lived a full life and you've raised children. And when it's your time, they all take time off from their jobs and they come to where you are and they surround your bed, squeezing your hand and weeping and telling you how much they love you. We don't call that perishing. That is just the natural process of passing away. And you are passing away like King David who died surrounded by all his trusted advisors, his favorite wife, and all the people who loved him. Perishing is where you like die in a car crash and it's a horrible fiery one and the firefighters aren't able to put it up in time put it out in time so that they can barely get any parts of you out of the car. When you perish, it's a painful and terrible way to die. It, the word carries with it connotations of great suffering. And this verse says that in the time that Satan and Satan's lawless one will begin to rise and come to the forefront, become visible to us all, there will be wicked deceptions directed against people who are perishing. So what does it mean to be perishing if you're not already physically dead? It means that you are dying in your mind and in your heart because you are full of lies and those lies will eventually snatch and carry you off to destruction. The reason that I'm going deep into this verse is because this is perhaps the first video where I am going to reveal what the Lord revealed to me in an old video entitled The Fig, The Seeds, and The Injectable Solutions. I will call it that. Now, I said that I have been seeing zombies as far back as 2010. That's, that's as far back as I can pin it. The middle of the year 2010 was the first time I think I had a dream about reanime. And I call them reanime because these are people who have clearly died. So they have died and they have started, they have gone well into the process of rotting, which is that reanime have an unbelievable stench. I will go through their characteristics later in the video, but they have gone through the process that we know of rotting of the body body and yet they are still animated in that they are alive and they do have the ability to have some limited thinking and limited communication skills and they can run and hunt and kill. So they do everything, for instance, that, that a wild animal would do, except that you can see that they are dead. 
So they have died and then come back to life, which is called reanimation, which is why I call them reanimate. So I have seen these creatures from as far back as 2010. And in 2010, God was not talking to me at all about why I was having these dreams of undead people um, running around and just wreaking havoc and killing people and being so strong and just being a menace in the world. I didn't understand why I was having these dreams. But in the video, the fig and the seeds and the V, God revealed to me where reanime come from. So it was basically a process of 10 years before the Lord finally said to me, Celestial, the reanime will arise from those who take the injectable solutions. And I was stunned. And today the Lord said to me to make sure that I make it understood that the seeds in the V are going to cause harm to the genetic structure of man dash kind. I have to be careful with this video because I do not want strikes or having it taken down. With wisdom will I make this video. And so the seeds in the V, the little black seeds that I observed, which you can find out about if you read the prophecy, I will tag the prophecy in the description box. Those little seeds have instructions in them that are going to greatly change shape and um, turn this vessel known as humanity into something other. And at a certain time, that otherness being carried in the body of those who have taken the solutions will respond to something else. So I shared this in, in the prophecy, they will tear you to pieces. I will also tag that in the description box below. Each prophecy takes you to the blog and at the bottom of every prophecy, the video is there. So you can get both the written and the visual and get the fuller picture for yourself. And so I was very shocked. And I was at pains to explain when the Lord first revealed this to me, I, I was at pains to explain that from what I have seen and from what the Lord has told me, it is not every person who takes the injectable that is going to undergo this shift, undergo this change. Not at all. It seemed to be only some, but the problem is that every time I have these dreams and every time I have this, these visions, the number is in the millions of millions. So the number is so shockingly great. So many people that it should be clear to us. And this is how I explained it because this is how it was explained to me. All means all. But when someone says, will arise from among like it says the beast that rose from the sea. So it came from a certain place and it is one of many things. In the scripture, when it says arise from the sea, it means that the beast will actually arise from the great mass of humanity. The Messiah was also like that. He was here as a man, just like us. But when it was time for him to fulfill Messiah destiny, he arose from our midst and then manifested and fulfilled his destiny as Messiah. And so... These who have taken these are a set. So it is a great set. And then from among them, so out of their midst, out of this great number, millions of millions of millions will arise those who, when perhaps the word is triggered or when coming into contact with whatever is going to activate what they carry. It is those who changed, excuse me, please. It is those who changed and manifested this reanime. Now a little bit about reanime. They are extremely dangerous. The Lord was talking to me about them as I was setting up the camera and everything and telling me, Celestial, make it known that they hunt in packs. They hunt in packs. 
He says that they do hunt on their own, so you can count on encountering a lone reanime, a lone zombie that perhaps it's on its own. It doesn't have a group. It doesn't have a pack. It is just walking in the woods by itself, and it happens to come upon a deer or a lost person, and then it will just be a battle to the death between that person and the reanime. But mostly, they prefer to hunt in packs. They are these creatures of the end time will be extremely strong. So this is not going to be a battle or encounter for the faint hearted. It will not be like that. People ask questions like, should we kill them? And my answer is honestly, what do you think? If you were to come across a rabbit dog or a wolf in the woods and it's the dog or you, doesn't matter that this particular dog stands upright and looks like your uncle Matthew. It has no kinship to humanity. It is other. It is an otherling. It is an undead. It is unclean. First of all, it is never entering the Lord's eternal kingdom, and it won't even be allowed to enter anywhere that human beings are congregated. So in one of the dreams that I had, I cannot remember the title of that dream, but it is a dream that has already been posted. People in the South had a very robust response to these things. When these things began killing their cattle and snatching and running off with their horses and they were finding their animals gutted and torn and things like that, these people, after a lifetime of hunting, after a, life, a lifetime of knowing how things work out in the woods, these people instantly knew that no natural animal, none of, none of the natural predators of a cow or none of the natural predators of a horse had did this. They knew that something else had done this. And so they took their guns and they took fire on sticks and things like that. And they went out into the forest to see what was happening. And they found out pretty quickly what it was. And they fought them. They were very courageous in those areas. They fought them. They fought for their families. They fought for their communities. And they were very successful in driving these things away from them and setting up for themselves protected communities where they did not suffer too many losses from reanime. But I have said that as the Lord has shown me, these things will be so bold that they will, they will be committing murder in the cities. In the same dream, I really wish I could remember the name of that dream, but you can count on me leaving it in the description box. I saw that in the cities, these things were the cause of a huge spike in the death rate. And this was happening across the country. And as it was happening, the government attempted to lie. The government and the C dash, same letter as I said before, they came out and they were trying to pin it on the rise of serial killers in America. In the midst of deceit, my people dwell. They came out and they said, we're having a rise in serial killers. And tonight, the Night Stalker in Miami, and it wasn't Night Stalkers. It was ordinary people who have gone and stuck out their arm for you know what it is. And then at a certain time, some of them began to change. And what I saw with reanime in yet another dream is that when the humanity begins departing out of them, they know it and they feel a sense of overpowering shame. So they feel overpowering shame. And eventually when these changes are just as you see in the superhero movies when they're changing to Wolfman or Ant-Man or whatever man or woman that they're changing to, they can sense the changes in themselves. And you see them a lot hiding in their bedrooms and people say, are you fine? Do you want dinner? And they say, no. And that's because they're beginning to develop webs between their fingers or wings are growing on their back. And so they don't want these changes to be perceived. And the same I saw with reanime. When the changes and the cravings that they were getting began began to take away more of their humanity than they could hide, they ran off. So they ran away from where they lived. They ran away from human community. But the thing is that the next time you saw this person, they were completely changed, looking like family perhaps, but absolutely not family, completely other than human. So this post 
When I wrote this post, I woke up in severe frustration because the Lord gave me two dreams of reanimate back to back. One of them was extremely chilling. And this one made me very frustrated because this one is actually a cautionary tale against fools. I use that word freely on this channel because the Bible uses it freely in the book of Proverbs and all through the scriptures. And the reason I use it freely is because this is a very great subset of people who live all around us and among us. People who are prone to deception, people who don't listen, people who are not open to receiving new information, and people who are not even aware that they have been conditioned by society to mock any information that they hear that doesn't fit within their neat little lifestyle paradigm. So any new information coming in that they cannot find a neat and tidy place to put it, they have been conditioned by mainstream media and by the cult group think out there that you must mock it because then when you mock it and go, <laughs> whoever heard of that, then all of a sudden you become elevated through the simple act of laughing. And then the other person becomes an idiot. The only problem is that you can't deal with truth that way. Truth is immovable. It does not shift. If truth was so weak that it would stop being truth just because you laughed, then that means that when that other guy laughed on the cross and said to Jesus, why don't you bring yourself down from the cross, then he would have stopped being the son of God just because somebody laughed. So truth is not that cheap and you can't get rid of it that way. And I have a few scriptures just to show you how fools respond and how it was indicated in this dream that unless we have the mercy of God in the end times, other people will put our lives at risk. I am saying this so that if anybody watches this video and think that times of the, those times that are coming will be a joke, it will not be. You can do all that you can do with the preparing and everything, but do you know that if there is one person in your family, for instance, when you are preparing and saying, Marge, it's looking like we're going to have to go to the mountain soon, and Marge says okay, and your 15-year-old says okay, and your three-year-old three says, sure, dad, and your 19-year-old thinks... I don't want to move to the mountains and picks up the phone and calls the, those police that will be in black and say, my family is attempting to abuse me. And then they come in the beast system and take the entire family away, including him, because he didn't understand that when the beast system rises and comes into power, it is rarely going to differentiate between the snitch and the snitched on. So here Proverbs chapter 18 and verse two. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Proverbs 29 and 11. A fool will give full vent to his spirit, but a wise man is able to hold it back. Now, I shared about this in the social currency video, the social, social society score video, something like that credit score video, where I was saying that in the end times, many people will be separated from their right to keep breathing simply because they have not developed the character, the character and the, and the fruits of the spirit that we find in Galatians chapter five, verses 22 and 23, where it says that people are meek and people are long suffering and people are people of endurance. Here, Proverbs talks about a group of people who will fully vent their spirit. That means that you will come to a situation where it is wisest to be silent. It's just wise to keep quiet because the chances are 89 to 94% that if you are silent, the Lord will be able to bring you through that situation unscathed. But then there are people who are going to start this over my dead body business. And what people don't understand here in America and around the world, but mostly here in the United States, because this is a different and special group of people is that when you say over your dead body in the end times, Satan will grant your wish. A fool's mouth will destroy him, and his own lips are a snare to his soul. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 7. I can't find the one that I really wanted to share, but that one is always with me. And it says that even if you beat a fool with rods, you can't separate him from foolishness. And so here's the dream. 
I dreamt that I lived in a trash junkyard. So this was in the future. I knew it was a junkyard because, you know, you see those abandoned semi trucks and things of that nature. That's what was in this junkyard. A lot of burnt out, burnt out cars and twisted metals and old school buses and things like that. And I lived in a trailer that somehow we as people had managed to lift up and balance on. It was... It was, you know, the con containers, the large containers that the long haul trucks, the overnight trucks carry. So we managed to balance the, this, con we managed to balance the trailer we were living on, on top of a container. And then on top of that, semi truck heads, not the curved kind, but the kind that look like monster trucks that are just a square. We put that on top of the container. And then on top of that, we had the trailer. And that is where we lived. I did not have an idea of how long we had been living there, but we must have been living there for at least a little bit. This is after things had become destroyed and people were no longer living in proper homes and having jobs and things like that. And so we lived high up there and we rarely, if ever left that trailer. It was me and four other adults. I do not know any of the people in this dream and about six young people. So we were about evenly matched, either 10 or 11, five adults and about five or six young people between the ages of 19 to 24. And it wasn't the ideal setup, but you know what? It worked. We had stores of food in there and the trailer had these intentionally darkened or blacked out windows. So it wasn't always light in there, but at least we, it did have working electricity. And even though it was kind of cramped, it was decent compared to what was going, going on outside. In this dream, the Lord did not immediately let me know what was outside. I just started the dream as I'm living in this place and I'm living with these people and this is what it is for now. And we had a guy who was sort of like a leader. He was doing a good enough job, but if you're trying to manage a lot of people from different backgrounds and all that who don't really know each other, it can get pretty difficult and tiring for even the most patient person. So this is why I say on the master's voice that in between praying for your family and praying for evangelism and praying for your job and praying for all the other things of daily life, don't forget to send your prayers into the future. Don't forget to ask God to cover your footsteps in the future. Don't forget to ask God to make sure that he will connect you to righteous, holy, temperate people in the future. Ask God to lead your footsteps to people who are, who understand that the Bible says, submit yourselves to one another in love. Ask God to put you with reasonable people. If you end up as one of those people separated from family, if your family is going to choose the beast and some people's families absolutely will. Some people are saying, I'm not going to starve. I'm not living in the forest. I'm not going to live without basic amenities. We've done this for eight months. I'm sure God will not want us to suffer. Honey, I'm going to the city and I'm taking the kids with me. And then you'll just be, whether honey is male or female, you honey will stay behind in the forest by yourself and your family will go into the city and become absorbed. We will all be there for a while, but when it comes time to separate, some people will refuse to separate. And those are the people who will be perishing and wandering after the beast. And so we lived like this. And then at a certain point in the dream, as God put me into the dream and I just picked up all this, I see this young man from among the group talking, the eldest boy, he, he's talking to the other young people. And then I suddenly overhear, so it's settled then, right? We're all agreed. Okay, then let's go. And I was on that situation like a striking cobra. I was like, what's settled? Let's go where? Where do you think you're going? Because the agreement that we had was that we were not leaving that trailer. And it was because, as I said, though God dropped me in the dream, something was clearly outside. So I said, where do you guys think you're going? And I was shocked. Like, are you serious? You know where we are and you know what's out there. So what do you think you are doing? And this young man looked very ashamed because he knew what the rules were. 
You see, all of us had gotten into the trailer with full knowledge of what we were running away from outside. So this person was not somebody brand new. It's not like he was beamed down from another world and joined us in the trailer and then was, why are you guys in this trailer? Every single one of these young people knew why we were living in these constrained conditions. And yet he says to me, yeah, we know, we know, but we know, we just want to look around. We've been in here too long. And this sparked off a huge argument in the trailer. These dreams that God gives me are so real world, so real life scenario. And this is why when I come here, I am telling you the honest revelations of what God wants us to know. Not every dream is fantastic and whatever. In fact, if you take reanimate out of this dream, this is simply a reminder from Jesus to let you know, don't die like a fool. And separate yourselves, as I said in Psalms 1 verse 1, from the fool, because fools will be the destruction of themselves and everybody else around them if you allow them to walk in their foolishness. And so this sparked off an argument in this trailer. And trust me, I was leading this one. But the guy who was our leader was so tired. He was so tired of just trying to manage 11 adults in a tiny space. And also the other young people, I could see some of them were reluctant to go outside, but peer pressure was causing this young group to stick together very hard because one of the things about young people is that they can't bear embarrassment. Young people aren't able to handle embarrassment because they're still too young to understand that embarrassment is just part of life, like falling and stubbing your toe or getting an F on a test that you didn't study for. These are things that you're just supposed to flow with, and that's how you actually come into adult maturity. But for the sake of not looking ashamed or letting their team down, they decided, oh no, it's us versus the adults. And so they insisted and they went out and I was yelling. I was yelling at this man and I was saying, are you going to sit there? and let these children kill us. But I mean, uh, short of putting hands on them, we couldn't stop them. And so they climbed down all this stuff. And definitely, as you can expect, in less than 10 minutes, they came sprinting back to this trailer, scrambling up to come. But guess what they brought with them? That's right, reanime. Because what? Reanime can hear movement over shocking distances. I do not even know if cougars and mountain lions can hear as well as these turned people can hear. So they came sprinting back to the trailer, bringing with them dead zombified people who were still alive in that they could run, see, hear, tear flesh, eat flesh, and follow scent. In fact, the hearing of the reanime was so excellent that that is why us in the trailer never spoke in our normal voices because we knew these creatures could hear over incredible distances. I knew that the reanime were outside. Every single one of us knew that they were outside because each of us had already seen or heard other people being killed by them before we found each other. And it was knowing that they were there that motivated us to build that sky trailer and lift it so high off the ground so that should they ever try to sneak in, by the time they could get to our lair, we would have heard and been able to prevent them. So in this dream, I said that even though I was dreaming, I felt a great anger because I saw what the Lord was showing me, that if we are not careful, we can lose our lives, not because we lack trust in him, not because we lack faith in him, but because we are going to be required to live through a time of great testing surrounded by people who are absolute ignorant about him, and they will act according to their fear, according to their limited understanding, according to their pride, and they may cost the people who do know Jesus and who are submitted to Jesus and who are trusting in Jesus at that moment, they may cost those people their lives. And so they brought these things back and they burst into the trailer It was one very tall male one and just some other ones. And so everybody scattered across the trailer, screaming and weeping. And people were so scared that they forgot about God. This is what I showed. 
And I've shared it, that human emotion can be so strong that we will skip right over the fact that we are saved and just cast Jesus in the corner. Not a single person in that trailer, the Christians were calling Jesus. And most of us in the trailer were Christians. They did not call in the name of the Lord. And so I was standing behind this male thing and I started to shout out scripture. I started to just bellow it out. And the ones that had cornered everyone, I saw that their skin began to blister and peel. So notice that I did not have any weapon. The weapon that I had was my helmet, my breastplate, my sword, my shield, my belt, and my sandals, with which I am never without even now in my natural life. I started shooting out bullets of scripture and just shouting Jesus in the name of Jesus and speaking scripture against them. And their skin started to blister and boil and they began to scream until they turned and ran out of the trailer. And I was furious with those children. People were crying. People had collapsed against the walls of the trailer. They had just been waiting to die. Basically, I was furious furious with those children because I knew that now that our location was known, we would have to abandon what was almost like the Marriott in those days. We would have to abandon that great hiding place and now go find somewhere else. And I was thinking, where would we find a safe place like this? Everything in our life had changed because of fools. And when the Lord woke me up from this dream, I was mad. This is not one of the best dreams that I've had. And so that is just it. And I shared in this scripture that it is very necessary to hide the word of God in your heart. When the Bible says that surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, a perilous pestilence is a deadly disease. But how many of us in 2020 and 2021 decided to trust in the words of Psalm 21, uh, Psalm 91 and believe that God will deliver us from the perilous pestilence? Most people decided to trust in the other pestilence and they went and lined up for and here now the Lord has revealed that out of the multitudes that lined up will arise this particular line of what is human and inhuman, and it will stop being human when it changes humanity for inhumanity. When God says that his truth will be your shield and your buckler, it means that having the word of God in your mouth will literally become a shield and a buckler that you can fight supernatural things with. We have never seen our spiritual armor, most of us, but it does exist. And the Lord expects us to trust in it when we are battling in the spiritual realm. So make sure that you learn Psalm 91 and that you memorize it until it becomes a part of you because it will literally save your life one day. This is Celestial with the master's voice. The next dream is also going to be about reanimate. Um, that dream also revealed more things about them. So until I see you again, may the Lord bless you and goodbye. Thank you to all of those who support this ministry. May the Lord bless you and return your seed to you. I am very grateful to you. Thank you for supporting the work that I do for the Lord and like the video and share. Subscribe if you are so led. And until I see you again, God bless you and bye.